although Affinity Photo's Tone Mapping Persona is typically used for tone mapping high dynamic range imagery and making it displayable in standard dynamic range, you can actually take advantage of its local contrast enhancement with any type of imagery. Here I've got a waterfall photograph that is fairly dull, tonally speaking. I'll select the background layer, which is the image information, then enter the Tone Mapping Persona up here. The default result looks far too bright because the tone compression slider is set to 100%. I'll reduce this all the way to zero. I can then start to bring up the local contrast slider, and this will enhance structure or texture in the image. Increasing the slider all the way produces quite a powerful effect, but this is now too strong, I feel, so I'll reduce it to around 45%. Once I'm happy with the result, I'll click Apply to commit it. This tone mapping operation is destructive, so if we wanted more flexibility with the local contrast effect, we would need to duplicate the image layer beforehand. With this document, I'll select the background layer and duplicate it with Command-J on Mac, Control-J on Windows. Then I'll move to the tone mapping persona. As before, I'll reduce the tone compression slider and start to increase the local contrast slider. Around 50% looks good for the texture of the train, but I don't particularly want the rest of the image to be affected. I'll click Apply, and back in the main photo persona, I'll mask this duplicate background layer, which now contains the local contrast enhancement. To add an empty mask, I can option click on Mac, right click on Windows, on the Mask Layer button and choose Empty Mask. The effect will disappear entirely. Now I can switch to the Paintbrush tool with B, reduce the brush hardness to 0%, increase the brush width, then make sure my brush color is set to white. I can now paint into the train and perhaps some of the track as well to bring the local contrast enhancement effect back for these areas. I can hide the duplicate layer to reveal the before, then show it again to see the after. Finally, as well as masking a duplicated layer with the local contrast enhancement applied, you can also blend it in with the original result. On this document, I'll select and duplicate the background layer, then enter the tone mapping persona as usual. And I'll remove the tone compression then bring the local contrast slider up all the way. I'll actually introduce a small amount of tone compression back in to reveal some detail in the darker areas. Then I'll click Apply. Now this effect is far too strong, but I'm going to blend it in using a combination of blend ranges and layer opacity. First, with the duplicated layer selected, I'll click this cog icon to bring up the Blend Options dialog. On the Source Layer Ranges graph, I'll click drag the left hand node and drag it down all the way. Then I'll click drag on the graph line to create a new node and drag it up to the top. This will blend the darker areas of the layer away. I'll also reduce the layer opacity, perhaps to around 50%. When I hide and then show this layer, the effect is now more subtle and enhances the texture of the building without being too overpowering. And there we go, some ideas of how to use local contrast enhancement in the tone mapping persona. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for watching.